There are people who have less that are more grateful than people who have more. It's sad. Even Jesus asked the question, was, is there anybody else except this foreigner? Except this person who has no dealing with Jews at all? What about you? Are you the nine or are you the one? All right, I got a story for you and I got a question for you after this story, listen to it. While he was on his way to Jerusalem, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. He entered a village and 10 leprous men who stood at a distance met him and they raised their voice saying, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourself to the priests. And as they were going, they were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back glorifying God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at his feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered and said to him, were there not 10 cleansed? But the nine, where are they? Was no one found to return and give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, stand up, go, your faith has made you well. What is that story about? <laughs> that story is about 10 leprous people who came to Jesus and said, Lord, have mercy on us. Master, have mercy on us. And he said, go, show yourself to the priest. And as, as they were going, they were cleansed. And one returned, giving thanks to God. And Jesus said, were there not 10 of y'all? Where are they? Where are the other nine? Here's the question this Thanksgiving. Are you the nine or are you the one? Many of us, if the truth be told, we say we're thankful, but we're still going the other direction. Notice that Jesus said, go and show yourself to the priest. And it's not that we're not being obedient. It's just that we never turn back. Uh, they were doing what God told them to do. They were doing what Jesus told them to do, but they never turned back. And we just keep going and take our healing and take our blessings and never turn back to the blesser. And only one turned back to give thanks, glorifying God. And was he glorifying God with a whisper or was he glorifying God with a loud voice? The Bible says that he was glorifying God with a loud voice in verse 15. In other words, he saw what had happened in his life. A lot of times leprosy in the Bible is equated to sin. It's something that ravages your skin. It's something that makes you numb without feeling. It's something that uh, takes you all the way to death. There's no way out of it. And they were saved from something that there was no way out of. You better believe all of them should have been glorifying God with a loud voice. If you have been saved from your leprosy, if you've been saved from your sin, let's start there. For the wages of sin is death. Leprosy, sin, is supposed to take you out. It actually makes you numb towards God, depraved towards, dep uh, depraved towards God. It actually makes it to where you hurt yourself or people around you and you barely even know it because you have been anesthetized by the uh, disease of sin itself. No one can really be around them. They were ostracized. And Jesus gave it all back. He gave them feeling. He gave their nerves uh, their appropriate responses. He gave them the ability to be in the community again. He gave them salvation of their disease. But only one says thank you. And not only did he say thank you with a loud voice, he said thank you with returning to Jesus. It's hard to say thank you while you have your back turned on him. Many of us are living a life that's going in the opposite direction while being healed, but really turning and coming towards him with our life, with our feet, this leper, leprous man, and saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, not just with my lips, but also with my life that's in a Godward direction. Are you really thankful? Do you really love God? John 14, 15 says, if you love me, you will obey me. I will see it. It will be evident if you are thankful. Some of you are saying, but I don't have enough. Yeah, I mean, I, I really don't have enough. I don't have anything to be thankful for. Oh. 
Jesus even shows you with two fish and five loaves in Matthew 15. He gave thanks over not enough and then God multiplied it. A lot of us are like my kids. We only ask for more, but we're never thankful for what we have. And as a father, I don't give my kids more if they're not thankful for where they are currently. If there is no contentment with what you have, why would I give you more to not be content with? Are you thankful for where you're at, for the cleansing of your sin that you've already experienced? Let's start there. The Bible says, seek ye first his kingdom. And then we can talk about those other things. Be grateful this Thanksgiving with your life, but also like this leprous man with your voice. He glorified God with a loud voice. You know what that means? He care less what anybody thinks. He could care less what anybody thinks. This is my new life. This is my new uh, voice. I'm going to use my voice to glorify God. What are you using your voice to do? Everybody says, oh, yeah, I love God. Oh, yeah, I'm thankful. But what do you use your voice to do? Does your voice ever make people say something has happened in that person's life? God must have done something for them. Does your life make people want to go where you're going? Your life should be so loud. People don't even really need to hear what you say because you're that grateful. This leprous man was grateful in his life. He was grateful in his speech and he was loud. You can worship God silently, but you can't praise him that way. It should be evident feet and lips that you're actually thankful this Thanksgiving. And then he says, was there no one to come give glory to God except this foreigner? He's calling attention to a lot of times it's the people that you don't think would be grateful that are the most grateful. He's a Samaritan. Samaritans don't have any dealings with Jews. And here he is, the Samaritan, the least likely one. There are some people in prisons that are more grateful than people who are free. The least likely ones. There are some people who are sitting in hardships or who don't have anything. There are people in different parts of the world, third world countries, who are more grateful than, than people who are in first world countries. There are people who have less that are more grateful than people who have more. It's sad. Even Jesus asked the question, Was, is there anybody else except this foreigner? Except this person who has no dealing with Jews at all? What about you? Are you the nine or are you the one? Even in the trouble, the strife, the trial, the financial struggle, the marital struggle, this Thanksgiving, what are we giving thanks for? You can start with being healed of your sins and your iniquities. With your family, your life, your oxygen, your heart, your mind, your eyes, your ears, whatever it is that you have that works, and even some of the things that don't work. The Bible says, be thankful in everything, even if you can't be thankful for everything. This Thanksgiving is time for us to grow. This Thanksgiving is time for us to be the one and not the nine. This Thanksgiving is time for us to move from being an entitled child to a grateful child for what their father has already done. And trust me when I tell you, fathers multiply things when they have grateful kids. This Thanksgiving, make it vocal to your wife, to your husband, to your friends, to your family, to your children, to your grandparents, your aunts and uncles. This Christmas, let's all be the one and no longer be satisfied with being cleansed and being the nine. Happy Thanksgiving. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abound in the work of the Lord and know that it will not go in vain. Like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell. And let's talk about in the comments what you're truly thankful for. All right, till next time, let's go.